Hello, welcome back to another episode of Wealth in Christ Show, a show where we empower Christians to become financially free without compromising their faith. I'm your host, Dami, and today we'll be having a conversation about finance and love. You know, a conversation that's often then that you a conversation that's often happening around social media is how you balance finance and love. Oftentimes on social media it's portrayed as if you must focus on finance. Um, at the risk of ruining, uh, at the risk of not finding love or ruining the relationships that you currently have, you know. And what I want to talk about is that, you know, how finance should not be the deciding factor whether you should find love or not, contrary to what social media says. You know, social media tells you that, especially when you're in this journey of becoming financially free, that you must, um, when, when you're in this journey of becoming financially free, being involved with some romantically could be a distraction. And while that may be true, statistics have shown that, you know, married men are better, are more financially stable or more financially better off compared to single men. And the same way, you know, married women are better off financially than single women. And this conversation, I'm hoping to, you know, debunk that, you know, finance should be the deciding factor whether you should find love or not. You know, a man or woman does not need to be financially free or have attained financial freedom before finding love or making six figures. Yes, is a plus to make making six figures. Yes, is a get married before you are romantically engaged with somebody, you know, is a plus, but it's not a reality for everyone. And just because it's a reality for you, someone who may be listening or watching it, does not mean that's everyone's story. You know, no no one knows when a tree will produce fruit. In other words, none of us know what tomorrow will look like. None of us, you know, many of us have plans that, you know, at 30, at 40, at 50, at 60, we will be able to retire. We were able to, you know, be, um, we will finally reach um, financial freedom. We finally attain financial independence. But no one really knows because life happens. You know, different things happen um, that could delay us from reaching our financial um which um, that could do us from achieving financial freedom as quickly as quickly as we want, and this is what I want to talk about. That you know, everyone needs to be loved, uh, and many people have found themselves lonely and destroy many relationships because of wanting to become financial free. And I often have said that there's no point of becoming wealthy, becoming financially free, becoming financially independent, and you have no one to celebrate this with. You have no one to share this wealth with. Um, because it doesn't make sense. You know, what's the point of becoming wealthy? What is the point of becoming financially independent if you don't have anyone who you can enjoy this finance with? If you don't have anyone who you can share this finance with? And, you know, and it kind of uh, remind me of what it says in 1 Timothy 6.10. And 1 Timothy 6.10, 1 Timothy 6.10, and it reads, For the love of money is a root of all kind of evil, for which some have strayed from their faith, in the agree and pierce himself through many sorrows. And what I want to focus on is the many sorrows. The many sorrows, you know, could be loneliness, could be depression, could be, you know, not um, your relationship, you know, um, your relationship, what is specifically romantically, you know, you're not able to engage um, or be, uh, have a romantic relationship because you're so caught up. You're so caught up in trying to make money. And like I like to say, money can only solve money problems. You know, there's certain problems that money cannot solve. And as you know, if we are a society that encouraging people to um, focus mainly on, you know, becoming financially free, you know, neglecting the relationship, neglecting, you know, things that can bring them joy, things that can bring them peace, you know, things that, you know, we all as human, we all, we all desire to be loved. You know, it tells us to neglect these different things that we need as humans to be able to function properly. We're creating a, a group of people or creating a society where people will be lonely, where people are going to be depressed, where people are going uh, will only find value in what they can provide financially. And there's more to a human than what it, what they can provide financially. You know, um, and being that said, you know, I know some people may say that, yes, finance is one of the leading cause to divorce, but the reason why finance is one of the leading causes of divorce is because many people fail to have conversation in regards to money. And conversation being that, you know, how does the significant other view money? Do they view money as a tool or do they view money as something that they have to work for? 
in addition, you know, do they have any mon money traumas, you know, when it comes to money? Ha um, did they experience anything traumatic when it came to money? You know, um, what's their view on how many kids do they have? How many kids do they want to have? You know, that's, that's a financial question because kids do cost money to, ha um, to have. It, they do cost money to raise. You know, what type of schools these kids want to go to? You know, conversation you need to have with people before you get married, before you say I do, is... You know, what kind of debt do they have? Do they have any debt? You know, what is their plan to pay off the debt? You know, um, what is, what is their plan for retirement? Do they want to retire? You know, what is their rich life? As people say, what, what, like, what do they ever see themselves becoming financially stable? You know, um, do they budget their money? You know, why do they don't budget their money? You know, do they know what's going in and out? Are they saving for, are they, or do they have money saved for the rainy day? You know, all these different things are things you need to have a conversation with to make sure the person that you're planning to say I do will spend the rest of your life if you guys are on the same path. You guys are on the same path, same page financially. Because you don't want to be in a relationship, especially married, with someone who you have two different perspectives in regards to money, where you guys are constantly clashing. And that's why many people, because of a different perspective on how they view money or a different relationship with money, it leads to divorce. You know, um, so if a couple does not communicate effectively about their finance, it can lead to a problem. For example, if one spouse does not know how much money the other spouse is making or spending, it can lead to misunderstanding and arguments. So this is why it's very important, you know, while you're courting, while you're dating, it's significant uh, to ask these questions that which I have mentioned earlier so you can have an idea of how they view money. What is their money relationship like? And being that said, you know, I want to quickly go into the statistics um, where we compare married men versus single men, just to, just to prove my point that, you know, married men are financially more better and, and we'll look at why they're more financially more better compared to single men. So married men earns more money. Studies have shown that married men earn an average of 10 to 24% more than single men. This is also including different factors such as education, work experience, and age. And this is likely due to a number of factors, including the fact that married men are more likely to be in stable, long-term long -term jobs and to have a partner who support their career. So it's a benefit when you have someone who can support you financially. It goes on to say, married men are more likely to own a home. Home ownership is a major source of wealth for many people, and married men are more likely to own a home than a single man. You know, as we know right now, interest rates are very high, so it's, it's better to have two income. That way you'll be able to afford a house much better. In addition, married men are more financially secure. Married men are more likely to have retirement saving plans and to have life insurance. And they are, they are also less likely to experience financial hardships such as bankruptcy or foreclosure. This is likely due to the fact that married men have a shared financial responsibility and more likely to have a safety net in place. So just through this um, um, report, you can see why it's beneficial to not put so much emphasis on having, um, becoming, that you must become financially free before you live for a significant other. As it says here, uh, um, married men just are in a better position financially compared to single men. And now to compare to compare the single women to married women. Single women typically earn less money than married women. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the median income for a single woman was $39,831 in 2020. While the median income for married women was 67521 And this is likely due to a number of factors, including the fact that single women are more likely to work part-time job, part jobs or have low and paying jobs. When you're talking about wealth, single women have less wealth than married women. The median net worth for a single woman was $117,000 in 2020, while the median net worth for a married woman was $228,000. And this is likely due to the fact that single women have less time to save for retirement and other long-term goals. Now, if you want to go into the debt, but single women are more likely to be in debt than married women. You know, two incomes better than one to tackle up debt. The average debt for a single woman was $32,000 in 2020, while the average debt for a married woman was $25,000. That's a $7,000 difference. And this is likely due to the fact that single women have less disposable income and are more likely to take on debt to cover living expenses. And lastly, just to compare retirements and savings. You know, single women are less likely to have a retirement account or retirement savings compared to marijuana. The median retirement savings for single women was 
ten thousand dollars in twenty twenty. While the median retirement for married women was thirty thousand dollars. You can see it's three x. The married women are saving three times more than single men for retirement. And this is this is likely due to the fact that single men have less income and more expensive, which makes it very difficult to save. There's a number of different factors, like you guys can see, that contributes to uh that that contributes to a married man being more financially stable compared to a single man and vice versa, a single a married woman being more financially stable compared to a single woman. And just to show you that, you know, it doesn't make sense for us as a society to put a lot of emphasis on a man or a woman to have to become financially stable before they get married. When the reality is that most people, you know, especially if they're single, are not are not going to be able to or be harder for them to reach financial independence on their own. It'll be harder for them to reach financial stability on their own. And it's just, it's just uh, because of the life expense, life happens to everyone. And this is why, you know, two is better than one. Marrying the right spouse will make you flourish in all aspects of, of life financially. So just looking through this different statistic, we just see how, how married women and married men, they're just in every aspect of life financially, they're doing better than their counterparts who are single. And this is, this is a show that is, doesn't make sense. Like, like it's not gonna repeat like a broken, I'm a broken record. It just doesn't make sense to tell a man that, you know, he must make six figures before he consider being married. It does not make sense to tell a woman that she must focus on becoming financially stable before get married. You know, it does help if it's possible, if, if, um, if life happens to give you the put you in position or you happen to be in a position, a matter of fact, you happen to be in a position where you can become financially before you get married, great. But the reality for a lot of people is that, you know, because of college debt, because of um student loan debt, you know, family background, family responsibility, it's unlikely for a single man or single woman to be able to reach financial freedom on their own. This is why we need to come together and not so much isolate ourselves and try to achieve this financial wealth, financial freedom on our own. You know, it just it just show here in the statistics that more people who are married, more people who are engaged in themselves um, in a romantic relationship are able to reach their financial, are able to accomplish more financially. You know, they're able to save more financially, they're able to get out of debt more quickly um, compared to someone who's single. And just to go and put this in more and more, uh, be more realistic about the statistic of married men, um, single, um, of men in general and women in general who are making six figures, um, uh, cause I usually the number or the chart, the standard everyone's throwing that everyone must have or be making before they consider a romantic relationship. So according to the United States Census Bureau, about 23.4% of men in the United States make six figures or a hundred thousand dollars or more per year. This is significantly higher than the percentage of women who make six figures, which is only 11.1%. And here's the breakdown by age group. And here's the breakdown. 28.2% of men aged 25 to 34 make six figures. 26%, 26.1% of men aged 35 to 44 make six figures. 0.3% of men aged 45 to 54 make six figures. 18.7% of men aged 55 to 64 make six figures. And 14.2% of men aged 65 and older make six figures. Now you want to compare to women, you know, it's 10.6% of women aged 25 to 34 make six figures. 14.4% of women 35 to 44 make six figures. 17.2% of women aged 45 to 54 made six figures. 13.5% of women aged 55 to 64 made six figures. 8.3% of women aged 65 and older made six figures. And what is, what is very interesting is that when you look at it on a global scale, only 6.8% of adults worldwide are actually making six figures yearly. The statistic I was just talking about, um, I was reading, was only in the United States. And when you look at it globally, only 6.8% of adults make six figures. So this is just to, you know, just brings to attention that this push, this, um, 
preaching, uh, I guess, um, perception or this false reality that you have to be financially stable. You have to be making six figures. You have to um, have this in kind of income before you get married. It's all a plus, you know, before you get married. But it's not a reality for people. It's not a reality for people around the world. And it's also not a reality for people here in the United States. And, you know, I just want us to really be mindful, you know, of how we, you know, encourage this kind of behavior, you know. Because, like, like I said, these, this behavior of forcing people to focus so much on money, folk, to emphasize, um, emphasize the importance of money beyond what money is actually worth, beyond what money can actually solve for them. You know, it's leading people to being low, it's leading people to becoming depressed, it's leading people to be, um, not have any kind of, not have anyone in their circle, and not having one um, around them, you know, who they can, you know, love, you know, love on, and who they can, you know, celebrate with, you know, we don't want to create a society of loners, we want to create a society uh, where people value the points of family, people value the points of marriage, you know, this is why, you know, I feel like it was necessary to have this conversation, so I hope this blessed you guys. I hope you guys was able to take some knowledge. You guys, able, yeah, I hope you guys were able to gain some knowledge um, around this conversation. You know, feel free to comment down below, message me, um, you know, message me, and just give me your your perspective on this conversation in regards to finance and love. Do you agree that a person must become financially stable before um, they find love, or do you think it's okay for a person to look for someone who's like minded? who has a um, like-minded vision to build wealth together. You know, let me know in the comments. And like always, stay blessed and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.